Prime Minister Haile Mariam Dessalin, our distinguished and honored guests that have come to Addis Ababa, and all ladies and gentlemen. I want to begin by thanking IFPRI for choosing to be in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, but also to be in Africa and also the year 2014 to hold this important meeting. Being in Addis Ababa, first of all, you send a very strong statement that here is a country which at one time captured the attention of the world through TVs that indicated the tragedy of famine, but which has risen from ashes to build one of the strongest agricultural sector in the African continent. And I please give His Excellency <laughs> Prime Minister. I witnessed in the year 2010-2012, because I was right in the center of that activity, when there was drought and famine in the Horn of Africa. And as others have said, including the executive director of IFAD, the impact could have been worse. But because of what has been done by the leaders of the continent, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. And this is what we are talking about here today. This effort and journey for Africa started in the year 2003. Because for many, almost two decades, agriculture was on a downward trend. And of course, the event like the one I've just referred to still was haunting the leaders of the continent. And so come 2003, the leaders of Africa decided to embark on the program under the title Comprehensive Africa Agricultural Development Program. The reason it was given that title of comprehensive is for some of the reasons that have been cited here. For too much or for too long, the farmer was out of the equation. A farmer was told what to do after plants had been conceived and prepared in some place. But beginning 2003, Africa's approach to agriculture has changed that we now have a platform that brings government together, that brings farmers, and brings all other actors to the table to design and implement agriculture. And so the first point I want to make and to also appeal to you is that we work in this mainstream of agriculture, and I know that IFPRI has been right in the center, FAO has been right in the center, F, uh, WFP has been in the center, and we want to encourage that participation through CADEP. Second point that I want to make this evening is even when we have done this, there are indications that are still worrying. Looking back to 1990, the number of people that were, as it would, one would designate it, and the food insufficiency were about 175 million. Come 2012, this number had risen to 240 million. Of course, even without, if without this intervention, perhaps this figure would have been worse. But obviously, this number is worrying. And so we must then think about it. And when you look at the people affected, there are mainly small-scale farmers. And if you look at this small-scale farmer, a farmer is faced with a situation that the soil is increasingly degraded. The technology is outdated. But above all, and the worst of them all that we are facing here today, is the frequency, the intensity, 
and width of climate change factors like drought. This is perhaps one of the most difficult impacts that we have to grapple with in Africa. And so the research that we are talking about should address how Africa can adapt its agriculture to climate change. In this regard, I want to make the third point. And this is where we would also like to encourage organizations like World Food Program to please support Africa's effort in the lines that you have spoken, especially in procuring from Africa, because we continue to see these spikes, spikes that a farmer faces. A wood year, a farmer is loaded with crop that they cannot get rid of from their farm, and some of it rot, losing up to 30-40%. Then a bad year, a farmer is in a very difficult situation. Please put in your program a serious mechanism to increase the offtake from Africa so that you can support African efforts to create reserves and this time change, and this is the point I want to make, African agriculture, especially for the policymakers in our midst, that yes, having a national approach is good enough, but a national approach is not an optimal solution. The optimal solution is a regional approach. For reasons that have been stated here, disease knows no boundary. Drought knows no boundary. But above all, we should also encourage trade because that is the only way we are going to support this farmer. That's the only way we can start making agriculture a business <coughs> that the farmer can have predictable income. Perhaps on a minor point, but equally important, I'm talking about resilience and the issue of drought. From the African point of perspective, we are focusing on risk mitigation rather than disaster management or crisis management. And for that, we have taken a number of measures, including the setting up of a regional insurance agency so that this can support the effort of quick rebound, but also to mitigate the impact of risk that as Africa we are looking at. This year of agriculture, African leaders are planning to take more commitments. In the last 10 years, we have seen through the commitments they made in 2003, agriculture has been growing at 4%. But we are saying that's not enough. But more commitments, commitments that will go in the direction of supporting particularly responsible investment, issues of equity that have been talked about, particularly inclusiveness, looking at gender, but continuing to focus on how we can improve the productivity. Because Africa's productivity is the least in the world. And if we look at the factors that we have underlined and focus on those elements, which go from whether it's the technology we're using, the soil factors, and all the other elements, Africa should be now benchmarked to good examples like the example we have been given about Bangladesh and the others, because we have demonstrated through our leadership, through the small farm out there, that things can change and are changing. We already have a few countries that are already above producing more than 100% of their national food services. And that's why all these factors indicate that if in the last few years, especially 2008 when we had this crisis of food, Africa has made this progress. Transformation is possible. And for us, Africa, agriculture is the centerpiece because that's where our population is. And that's why our leaders have chosen to invest in agriculture. And that's why our leaders next month will be meeting to make more commitments. And we hope, on your part of the international community, 
you will make commitments that you can fulfill, some of which will then support our efforts. Thank you so much and welcome. Thank you.